Hello, students. In this Friday's problem solving sessions, we are doing Chapter 6, Problem 101 on the Chapter 6 online homework, which is in the Gas Laws chapter. And it's a combination of applying Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure, using stoichiometry and the ideal gas law constant to determine one of the parameters, whether that be volume or moles when collecting a gas over water. So let's just jump right into the problem. So the problem reads, consider the following reaction. So we know there's a reaction of two nickel two oxide as it decomposes to nickel as a solid in elemental form and oxygen gas. So we know right off the bat that there is a gas being produced in this decomposition reaction. If the O2 is collected over water at 40 degrees Celsius and a total pressure of 745 millimeters of mercury, what volume of gas is collected for the reaction of 24.78 grams of nickel two oxide? So this is, this is a lot, right? You're reading all this, you're seeing, but one thing we know for sure is we're discussing the volume of a gas. So we want to figure out the volume of a gas. We also notice that temperature is provided and a total pressure. So chances are you're going to have to use, if you're given temperature and pressure and you want volume, you're going to have to use the ideal gas law equation, PV equals NRT. So that's great. So, however, we have to be careful in this problem and not just plug everything in directly. And what I mean by that is we have this pressure and we have this temperature, but when we read more carefully, we read that the oxygen is collected over water. Now, I've discussed this in the single displacement reactions and the collection of gas over water. Anytime you collect a gas over water, the total pressure that is exerted by that gas is really the sum of the parts. So it's going to be, there's going to be pressure that's being exerted by the oxygen gas that you collect, but there's also going to be a pressure that's exerted by the water vapor. It's called vapor pressure of water because at any given temperature, water evaporates. So that total pressure is the hint, right? The total pressure is not just the pressure of the oxygen gas, but it's also the pressure, the vapor pressure of the water because you're collecting it over water. So why are they telling us total pressure? Because this is Dalton's law of partial pressure. The total pressure that we collect is a combination of water, water vapor and oxygen. Now, how do we get just the pressure of the oxygen? Because again, I want to figure out the volume of the oxygen gas collected. Well, to get the pressure of just the oxygen, because again, to get the volume of oxygen, I only want the pressure of the oxygen and the moles. I rearrange Dalton's law of total pressure and I solve for it by, if I have the total pressure and I subtract the water vapor pressure, I can get just the pressure of the oxygen gas I'm collecting. Now this popped up a little bit faster than I wanted it to, but how do I get the water vapor pressure? You're not expected to memorize this. There's no way you can memorize the water vapor pressure at every given temperature. So if you were given a problem like this in the book, you would refer to the table in your book, or you can look, at, look it up. But you, there's no way you're expected to memorize this. So you would find the table in your book and you would look under your given temperature of this reaction, 40 degrees, and you would find under 40 degrees Celsius, the vapor pressure of the water is 55.4 millimeters of mercury. So now using that, I know the water vapor pressure given at 40 degrees Celsius. I know that the total pressure is 745 millimeters of mercury. I can solve for the pressure by just plugging it in. And when I solve for the pressure of the oxygen, I have to take into account I'm still using my significant figure rules. And following the rules of addition and subtraction, 
I'm not going to use the 55.40 millimeters of mercury. I'm going to treat that as an exact number. What I'm actually using for significant figure rules are the rules based on the numbers given to me. And 745 goes to the one place, which means that's where this significant figure should stop, as at the ones place. Now, I'm underlining it to show you that there's actually three sig figs here, but I'm not going to round just yet because in a problem like this, you may get round off error. But the good news is now with pressure, I have the pressure of just the oxygen gas, okay? Because I want to figure out the volume of oxygen gas, not the water vapor pressure. So now that I have the pressure of oxygen gas, it's in millimeters of mercury. And I know with PV equals NRT, R, the ideal gas law constant, R, the ideal gas law constant, is in units of liter atmosphere per Kelvin mole. So I need to change my millimeters of mercury into atmospheric pressure. So how do I do that? I use a conversion factor. There's 760 millimeters of mercury for one atmosphere. And again, I'm underlining the three sig figs because I have one, two, three sig figs here. So the seven is the third sig figs, but I'm gonna wait to round. So now I have the pressure of oxygen in units of atmospheric pressure, which is what I need. The other thing is temperature. Whenever we deal with gas laws, you have to use the absolute temperature scale. According to Charles' law, we extrapolated that. And the absolute temperature scale is Kelvin. So we have to convert the 40 degrees Celsius into Kelvin. So we add 273.15. Again, the 273.15, we are not using this for significant figure purposes. We're treating that as an exact number, so we are using the 40.0 as significant figures. And we see that the zero is in the 10th place. It counts as a significant figure because it's a trailing zero after following a decimal. When I add this all up, I'm going to the 10th place following the rules for addition and subtraction. So now I have my pressure, I have my temperature. What else do I need to solve for a volume? Well, Again, there's four parameters, pressure, volume, and temperature, but there's also moles of the oxygen gas. So how am I going to figure out the moles of the oxygen gas? Well, that's where good old stoic comes. They gave us the grams of the reactant that are producing the product of oxygen. So that's why we have a balanced chemical equation and we can follow our rules of stoichiometry convert the given grams of the nickel-2 oxide to moles. And once we have moles of nickel-2 oxide in our balance equation, we see it's a 2 to 1 mole ratio to oxygen, and we will have our moles of oxygen gas. So now we do that. We convert the 24.78 grams of nickel-2 oxide using its molar mass to moles of nickel-2 oxide. And then there's 2 moles of nickel-2 oxide per one mole of oxygen. We get that in our balanced chemical equation that was provided, and now we get the moles of O2. So we see, following significant figures, this is a different rule. It's not addition and subtraction, it's multiplication. We start with four sig figs. We're not using the conversion factors, or we're treating them as exact. So four sig figs in the 24.78 grams, so our final answer should have four significant figures. So I underline the eight to show the four sig figs. So we have everything. We have the pressure of the oxygen gas, and even though it was collected over water using Dalton's law of partial pressure, we were able to subtract the water vapor pressure at 40 degrees Celsius from the total pressure given in the problem. We converted our temperature of 40 degrees Celsius into Kelvin. And using stoichiometry, we use the grams of the reactant to determine the moles of the product. So now that we have pressure, temperature, and moles of oxygen, we can plug it into the ideal gas law equation to solve for a volume. Now, an easy way to rearrange this algebraically is divide both sides by pressure to get volume isolated, and we get our very last step. The volume of oxygen gas 
is the moles of oxygen times the ideal gas law constant and the temperature divided by the pressure of oxygen. I plug in the 0 0.1658857 moles, which I got from Stoich. I realize there's four sig figs there. Plug in the ideal gas law constant, which shows the units of liter atmosphere per Kelvin mole. The moles cancel. The Kelvin cancel here. We see that the atmosphere will cancel, leaving me with liters. I use the 313.2 Kelvin. It's to the uh, four decimals. I'm sorry, four significant figures. So this is four sig figs in moles. Four sig figs for temperature. I go to my very last parameter of pressure, which has three sig figs that I saw earlier because it's underlined here. Underlined here, it goes all the way back to the 745 millimeters, which is the ones place. So this number has three sig figs. I plug the pressure in for atmosphere, plug it all in, and I get 4.70. And I have to add that trailing zero because I want three sig figs in my final answer. 4.70 liters of oxygen gas are collected in this reaction under these parameters. So I hope you enjoyed this problem solving session. This is very similar to a lot of your homework problems. It's a great problem for me to go over because it combines the ideal gas law, Dalton's law of partial pressure, and using our vapor pressure of water tables to determine the amount of gas collected over water. And it also incorporated what we love, stoichiometry, which is the nuts and bolts of chemistry. So. Thanks so much for watching, uh, and I hope you enjoyed this video.